Hello and welcome to Couples Create Cashflow. My name is Jordan Johnson. I'm your host. Today we are following up in our Win With Money series, which is stage three, Tack Debt. So if you need a little recap, stage one, we looked at situations where you have a negative cash flow, your income is actually lower than your expenses. And the best way to deal with that situation is to decrease your expenses in order to get a little bit uh, of a positive cash flow happening. Remember, cash flow is income minus expenses. So we need to have more income than expenses. And the quickest way to do that is to spend less money. The second stage is now that you have some positive cash flow, you need to find a way to have a buffer for emergencies. And so we talked about saving $1,000 for emergencies, and that's just a basic emergency fund. Um, the way to do that would be to try to increase your income somehow. And we covered that in our stage two video. So today, stage three, we're going to look at the next part of you know winning with money, and that's to find a way to cut out all those interest expenses that we have as part of our lifestyle. And so we're looking at how do we use our cash flow to pay off our debts. Um, to get started, the top priority is to uh, evaluate the um, monthly expenses that we have that have some sort of interest. So we're talking about any kind of loan. Um, we want to find a way to limit how many, like a, what percentage of our expenses go toward just interest payments. Um, and as we do that, we, we free up more monthly cash flow, and that gives us more um, ammunition to go at bigger and better things. Um, so how do we do this? How do we limit those interest payments? Well, first of all, we got to, like I said, make a list. We got to identify these debts. We got to figure out what is it that's pulling interest payments out of our economy into somebody else's bank account. Um, we have to organize our debts. So based on a strategy, so if we'll cover three different strategies today. The first strategy is a debt snowball, which is a Dave Ramsey concept. Um, debt avalanche, which is another popular way of dealing with debt. And the third one is velocity banking, where you use a HELOC or a PLOC to um, cut down your debt. Um, and then once you've organized your debt, how you're going to um, attack that deck. Now you start looking at what are we going to do first? You start applying your cash flow to your strategy. So let's look at each one of these in a little bit more detail. Um, oh, sorry, before we do that, we're going to identify each debt first. So monthly payments, servicing a loan, credit cards, student loans, car loans, personal line of credit, home equity loan, HELOC, mortgage, anything that has some sort of interest payment. Um, we just want to get a full list of it. And really one thing that might be helpful, and a lot of people have a hard time doing this, but look at your statements for each one of these and figure out how much of your last payment was applied towards the principal and how much of your last payment was applied towards the interest. You may have a set payment every month, depending on what this is, that doesn't change. So you may think, oh, it's just the same every time. But in reality, anytime you have a debt that's amortized or split up into equal payments over a certain period of time, you are going to have a constantly shifting um, percentage of that payment that goes towards um, the principal, which is the amount that you borrowed versus the interest, which is how much you are paying to have access to that money. Um, Every time you use an amortization schedule to have that steady payment every month, you are going to find that the interest percentage is much higher than the percent, the principal percentage at the beginning of a loan, and it decreases as you get towards the end. It's just the nature of amortization schedules. It is even more likely to see that um, pattern the longer the term is. So. A uh, 15 year mortgage is going to have uh, more of an equal starting point of interest and principal versus a 30 year mortgage, which is going to start out, I think almost 80% of your first payment is going towards interest. It's just the nature of the loan. Um, student loans, car loans, they're usually shorter terms, but they still do have a percentage of that payment that's going towards interest. So we want to at least start with knowing which of our monthly payments have an interest. Um, 
the the whole point that makes all of this possible is this one right here. Um, normally, when we earn more money or we decrease our spending, pay off a bill, um, pay off a loan, I mean, uh, we tend to just say, oh, I got some extra money. Now I can go spend it. Um, usually, our spending will increase to match our income. And instead of doing that, we need to find a way through one of these strategies to basically trick ourselves into thinking we, we don't have that money and apply that money that we're saving, that extra cash flow towards other debts. You know, So instead of getting a victory and saying, oh, I'm just gonna stop there, we're saying, no, we're actually gonna keep targeting the next debt in our strategy and not increase our lifestyle. All right, so these are the three strategies we're gonna talk about, debt snowball, avalanche, and velocity banking. Here's our strategy number one, the debt snowball. So in this strategy, you would find your different debts, you would go through each one, and you would find the balance, the payment, and, maybe, and the interest rate. Now the interest rate in this strategy does not matter because you are only looking for the lowest dollar amount. You are finding the one that is going to be paid off the fastest if you find extra money or can apply extra money towards principal. Um, the reason why is human nature is if we don't get some momentum early on, we're going to end up with um, a difficult time maintaining a habit. And so this strategy really focuses on get some early wins. So for example, if you had a department store credit card that only had $200 on it, and yet it showed up on your list of debts, um, it wouldn't matter what the percentage, um, the annual percentage rate for that card would be, it's probably the lowest debt that you have. So if you could find an extra $200 in your budget, you would just pay that off that month. And then you would take whatever that minimum payment of you know maybe $10 or whatever that is, you would take that $10 and instead of counting that towards your monthly expenses, you would apply that to the next biggest um, debt. And you're, you're doing this with your, um, your non-mortgage debts. You don't need to focus in on your house yet, um, mostly because that's gonna probably be your highest debt. Um, you know, The ones that are lower will be things like the student loans and the credit cards, car loans, things like that. Um, Dave Ramsey talks a lot about being very intense with this um, payoff process that you want to really truly go right up to your limit of how much um, extra money you can throw at these debts because the faster you can get out of debt, the easier it'll be to build wealth. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, this is the stage of your finance, financial life where if you don't get your debts in order, um, none of the changes, none of the energy you're going to put into building wealth is going to matter. You need to, you need to find a way to plug the leaks in your finances first. And so this strategy is all about working systematically through um, that list. And what you'll do is every time you pay off a, a loan, you take that payment and just apply it to the next loan. So by the time you get to, let's say your biggest loan, let's say you had a $35,000 student loan and that was your biggest one. And you went through, you paid off the department credit card, the regular credit card, you paid off your car and you're massing up the snowball of debt payments. And all of a sudden, not only are you making the minimum payment on the, the, the student loan, but you're also throwing an extra few hundred dollars each month towards that student loan, eventually that would pay down to nothing. And personally, I did this strategy myself. When my wife and I were early on in our marriage, we did not have a lot of money. We just starting off in our careers, had a baby, remodeled a house. Like we, we had a lot of student loan debt. All of those things put together created a lot of stress. Our monthly payments on our um, student loan debts were really difficult to deal with. And so, um, we use this strategy and we actually split up our student loans based on the amount because um, we had them with different um, providers. And so we actually targeted specific ones based on their lowest balance and we paid them off in order that way. And it was really fun getting to the middle stage of this where 
you're like, wow, we have hundreds of extra dollars each month to pay down the balance faster. Um, the reason why it's important is when you make your automatic monthly payment, you actually are only doing the bare minimum. And like I said before, you get that interest and principal dynamic where towards the beginning of the loan, it's going to be um, not as much principal is getting paid down as you may think. But when you make an extra payment, all of that extra payment goes towards your principal balance. And so, it, and then with that has a compounding effect on the amount of interest that you end up paying. Really, the goal of this is to bring that balance down as fast as possible, no matter what the interest rate is, because if you can bring that balance down fast, the amount of interest that's going to accumulate is a lot, lot less. So now we've gone to the debt avalanche, same as the snowball, but the biggest thing is it targets the highest interest rate first. So for example, if you have a credit card that's 25% interest um, and it's about the same balance as a student loan, you would much rather go after the 25% interest than the maybe 7% student loan, okay? So let's say you had $10,000 balance on both. Um, it would be very smart to go with the 25% interest, right? Um, but the question gets a little bit more challenging if the um, the credit card is actually a higher balance. Let's say your student loan is, is only $2,000 left and your credit card is at $10,000. Um, there are some people out there that would say, well, why would you want that balance of $10,000 um, getting that 25% interest every month um, while you're paying down a 7% um, student loan? And, you know, different schools of thought, There, there's a lot of truth to that. So you would definitely want to look at your unique scenario and, and maybe the debt avalanche would actually be faster. The biggest thing that comes back to it is how much momentum would you get if you could get that smaller debt paid off first and then have more minimum monthly payments to add towards that um, higher interest rate. Okay, so here's where we veer off from traditional ways of paying off debt. And we start talking about something I love to talk about, which is velocity banking. Uh, this channel has quite a few videos about velocity banking. And um, this is kind of the stuff that I, I teach the most on. Um, when it comes to velocity banking, you are essentially speeding up the process of paying off debt by tapping into the equity of your home. So for example, you uh, perhaps have owned your home for a few years and perhaps you have you know, maybe $20,000 of equity that you can tap into on a HELOC. If your HELOC is allowing you to take that $20,000 and pay off multiple different consumer debts and only have that balance in one place, um, it can make a lot of sense to do that. Um, even without a strategy, it may make sense if your HELOC is at five or 6%. And let's say you had um, $20,000 worth of uh, a line of credit on your HELOC and you had a credit card that was 25% interest, um, you know, that was a $20,000 uh, credit uh, or balance, I'm sorry, it would make a lot of sense to move $25,000 of credit card debt um, into a $20,000 line of HELOC, or HELOC just because the interest rate's gonna be lower. That being said, even when the interest rates are not that big of a difference, velocity banking can be a lot faster due to the strategy itself. Um, and I guess I'm not going to get into that into super depth on that right now. But what I will say that the biggest factors for doing velocity banking are you have to have a house that has some equity. Um, you need to be able to have a good credit score. Most of the time we're looking at like 680 or higher. And you need to have a good budget at least a good spending habits that have been developed in the first couple stages. You you want to very consistently be hitting cash flow numbers that are, you know, hundreds of dollars each month. You want to be able to, to show that you are able to spend less than you earn. Um, and actually, one thing I missed with these other strategies, let's say you get that thousand dollars saved up and your cash flow is only like a hundred dollars a month. 
it's really not going to pay. You're not going to be able to pay things down very fast if you're just throwing a hundred dollars at your principal balances. You need to do more than that to try to increase your cash flow. The most you can do, or sorry, the more you can do, the, the quicker you're going to get this debt paid off. Uh, but you need to attack it really fast. With velocity banking, if you don't have good cash flow, it, the strategy just doesn't really make much sense. Um, I say here that you probably want to be cash flowing at least 500. Um, you might want to look more at the 750 to $1,000 range as well. I mean, just the idea is um, really develop this habit of spending less and making more money. Um, velocity banking is about taking good habits and increasing how well it can um, have a result for you. Um, essentially, the reason why velocity banking can be really helpful and fast is that um, you can very quickly pay off loans entirely, and that creates that um, extra cash flow immediately. And that means that you get to pay that money back to yourself um, or not have that expense come out of your system is a different way to put it. Um, you know, if you really want to know more about velocity banking, I do have a freebie at the end of this video that will help with that. All right. So the whole idea here with all three of these methods is it's going to take some time. It's really hard to calculate an accurate end date, but the faster you go on your cash flow, the faster you'll pay off your debt. And then you'll move into stage four. Um, the ultimate goal is to get all your debts except for your mortgage off the books. That gives you the best idea of what your cash flow looks like, gives you the best um, outcome when it comes to the percent of your expenses going towards interest every month. Um, the mortgage piece, uh, there is some debate about this, but I would say that paying off your house really depends on your goals. If you don't wanna get into investing too much and you just wanna pay it off house, um, it can be a really great thing to not have that housing expense. Now, you, you'll you never get away from taxes and home insurance. So make sure you figure that into your calculations. Even with a paid off house, you're going to have monthly payments towards your homeowner's insurance and your um, taxes. Or you'd want to set some, some money aside for those uh, those annual payments. But if you really don't want to pay off your mortgage yet, you know, for example, some people are still sitting with mortgages that are less than 4%. Um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to pay those debts off if you can invest that money and earn 6, 7, 10% on your money. Um, paying off a 3% debt just doesn't really do much for you, especially um, if every time you make an extra payment to your mortgage, it just means your balance goes down, um, but doesn't give you any extra spending capacity. Um, this also kind of allows us to talk about your savings fund. Um, you know, I look at savings as liquid assets. Um, it could be cash in a bank that it's sitting there making you one and a half to two and a half percent. That might be your, your savings. Um, it could be you put it into like an ETF, a really basic um, whole market stock market ETF. They're are a couple of those out there that are really well managed for very low fees through Vanguard. Maybe you do it that way. Maybe you'd rather just have available line of credit on uh, your HELOC. Maybe you keep $10,000 for emergencies. But either way, about three months of expenses allows you to then focus on, okay, I've paid off my debts and I've got some money saved up. Now what? You know, if, let's say three months of expenses is $21,000. Let's say you're at $7,000 a month. You, you pay $21,000 into a, a savings account, but now you still have a couple, 10, 20 grand sitting around. What do you do with that? And that's where stage four comes in. It's like, what do we do once we've paid these debts off and we have access to more money than what we need for this um, three months of expenses? All right, so let's land the plane here. Action steps. Starts by organizing your debts. So walking through each one that's a loan of some sort or has some kind of monthly payment that it has an interest penalty or interest um, component to it. List them all out on a piece of paper or a spreadsheet and figure out how you want to go about attacking that. If you decide to choose velocity banking, you're going to have to have a HELOC. 
And so look at, into that. Um, I have a course called How to Get the Right HELOC for Velocity Banking. Uh, it's $47. It's about two and a half hours of content. Um, I'm going to have a link in the description below for that. Um, but I also um, would highly recommend just watching more videos, seeing if that's a good strategy for you. Um, be happy to help. And then um, start diverting your monthly cash flow towards your strategy. So once you've picked a strategy, start sending your money towards the, the debts that you feel like um, are where you want to start. Repeat until you got all those debts paid off except for your mortgage. All right. So if you feel like you need a guide, I am a certified financial coach. I'd be happy to help you with your journey, no matter where you're at. Um, I am offering a free 30 minute consultation call. I have a form I need you to fill out first to kind of send me some of your numbers. That way I can have kind of a context of what you're dealing with and we can make our 30 minute call very helpful. Um, it, I have the ability to do ongoing coaching calls after that for a fee. Um, but I want to give people some opportunities to have a free conversation as well. And then I also have a free download. So I've got this three steps to start velocity banking um, PDF that I can send your way. Um, it also comes with a, um, a HELOC checklist if you're going to start looking for a HELOC. Um, that same HELOC checklist is what I use in my uh, course that helps you find a good HELOC. Um, I actually use that, that checklist and it demonstrate how that can help you find the right key lock. So with that being said, check out the description below for links to the free consultation call and the free download of the starts or three steps to start velocity banking and get going on this um, journey of paying off your debts. Um, I'm going to come back in a week or two here and launch a couple more videos as we kind of wrap up this series on the five stages of win with money. Um, but I've also got some other things coming down the pike here um, regarding velocity banking that I'm very excited to share with you. Uh, but for now, I uh, wish you the best as you pay off your debts. Take care.